words. <laughs> One, two, three, many, many. So when you see something more than three, then this tribe don't have a word, don't have a language to describe such phenomenon. And here we are facing the same situation. So we have a, some kind of long range entanglement. But our available mathematics, like integral, differentiation, you know, this uh, delta, you know, lambda, <laughs> somehow, they, 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 they don't describe this thing. So, so we have to invent a new mathematics. So this really the question about uh, what kind of mathematics allow us to understand this long range entanglement, or allow us to classify these uh, different long range entangled effects. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether we are in Newton type or not, but maybe a close. That's uh, uh, the mathematics seems there or seems not there, but uh, but at this time we are about to say, you know, the mathematician is about the uh, at the same stage as the physics. We probably kind of co-develop. Uh, we know that in one plus one dimension there is no long range entanglement. So this work by Westrick, Zurich, and uh, uh, Lato. And uh, but in two plus one dimension. Uh, uh, we have a long range entanglement. And uh, there's a particular long range entanglement called the abelian topology order, uh, where the positive particle only have an abelian statistics. And uh, then we find this kind of long range entanglement can be described by an integer matrix. And that's pretty simple. An integer matrix, integer symmetric matrix, which are K matrix. And this K matrix actually describes all the abelian topology order. But not in the one to one point way. Uh, sometimes uh, several K matrix can describe the same. And then there is a uh, there is a non-abelian topology order. Is when you have a, a two two plus dimensional quantum space where cross party have a non-abelian statistics, then the mathematics uh, become suddenly very fancy. It's a so-called modular tensor category theory plus a something called a central charge. This is a real number. So modular tensor category is like a kind of like a group. You know the different modular tensor category theory is like different group. Okay. And there is some different modular tensor category plus another data center chart. These two data classify, I believe, classify all the two, two plus one topology order. And then there is a, a, another kind of two plus one dimensional topology order, which is the boundary has energy gap. And this particular, uh, which is a subset of, the, of this kind. And this subset can be described as so called the unitary fusion category. So I, I just use this uh, to, to, say, to, to say that. Uh, we start to have some systematic understanding of a long range entanglement. But however, the mathematics is very unfamiliar. It's something like a category theory, tensor category theory, or unitary, or this uh, 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 N category theory. So, uh, so therefore, this kind of new mathematics, uh, which only developed you know, maybe 20 years ago uh, also, uh, seems, uh, uh, seems to play a very important role in physics to understand the quantum matter. And for the three plus one dimension, uh, we still don't know. Uh, maybe maybe some n category theory will play a role here, like the three category theory. And uh, so, but this uh, this is still uh, uh, developing, uh, still developing. And uh, maybe uh, maybe let me quickly finish this. And uh, so, and uh, then there is a, a, a we can also consider a system with a symmetry. Uh, if a system have a symmetry, then the situation is a, is a falling. So without symmetry, we have a long entanglement space. But with a symmetry, we will have a more long entanglement space because of this, uh, the, the, we have symmetry, we have more feature, so we have a more long entanglement space. And uh, before we will have a one short range entanglement space without symmetry. Then with the symmetry, we have suddenly have a many many different short range entanglement space. And we, we even have a short range entanglement state that do not break any symmetry, you know. And this short range entanglement state that do, do not break any symmetry is called a, a symmetry protected state. It's a SPD space. And uh, so this SPD space uh, 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 has some famous example, which is a one plus one, one dimension hold uh, phase and a two dimension and three dimensional topological uh, insulator. It's actually an example of this uh, is a short ring tangled, is a short ring tangled SPD space. And uh, again, very, very quickly, these uh, this SPD states have, a, have a some characteristic feature that uh, all the bulk uh, is a, uh, the bulk is a gap. The boundary
boundary can be gapless, and the boundary have anomaly. In particular, that uh, uh, the the topological other states, the boundary have a gravitational anomaly, and SPD states, the boundary have a gauge anomaly. Because SPD states have a symmetry, so this is symmetry became anomalous on the boundary. So this uh, this anomalous symmetry is called a gauge anomaly. And we also have some kind of a, a SPD states where the boundary have a mixed gauge gravity anomaly. So, so somehow this anomaly is something studied in Hundred of physics. But somehow this anomaly suddenly enter into condensed physics in a very systematic way. That the, the topology order states or SPD states have anomalous boundary. Topology order are associated with gravitational anomaly. And SPD states is associated with a gauge and the gravitational anomaly, or, or either gauge pure gauge anomaly or mixed gauge gravity anomaly. So with this understanding, once you understand this relation to the, with anomaly, then somehow we can develop a theory for SPD states. And uh, this theory is a group cohomology theory. Again, a very strange mathematics entered into physics. This group cohomology became a systematic uh, classification and understanding of those SPD states. And uh, so, so, so given the symmetry group and given the space-time dimension, we can have this table to say, uh, for the sake of the ZN symmetry, so there's a, a ZN times ZN, uh, so there's, there's N square different phase in four Poisson dimension. <laughs> okay, and uh, so, so we actually know how many distinct phase in each dimension for each symmetry group. And this is basic result of a group homology. So we see that uh, there's a, uh, so that's, that, that is the story from the condensed matter side. That in condensed matter, we have many, many different uh, uh, different uh, quantum <coughs> matter uh, with different entanglement. And uh, the language to describe this uh, different entanglement turn out to be pretty modern math, like a group cohomology of tensor category theory. And so, so I'm thinking, you know, many years ago, uh, we discovered symmetry in physics so that forced the physicist to learn group theory. So now we discover entanglement in physics. Well, it's, uh, it's pretty scary. So we have to learn tensor category theory <laughs> in the next few years, I don't know. And uh, so, uh, so basically, it's, it's kind of summarize our picture for different quantum matter. We have symmetry breaking. We have a non-symmetry breaking, but those coming from the different entanglement and the cycle. And the group theory can classify different crystal and the group homology classify SPD state, and maybe category theory can classify topology order. So in this picture, I want to say that uh, from condensed matter point of view, our vacuum is just a particular material, you know, and this particular material has some particular uh, lung entanglement. So that gives us standard model electron photon. But however, uh, we can, in a material world, uh, we can make all kinds of material with all different states with all different entanglement. So in particular, I'm not sure whether our space is a qubit or not. But however, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, in, in near future, we can find some kind of uh, material in condensed matter system where the collector mode in this material actually satisfy, uh, I, uh, uh, not Einstein, but the Maxwell equation. So this kind of material uh, probably can be Very interesting talk. Questions? Oh, uh, you described the uh, uh, Maxwell uh, field um, as an closed strings. And is, is it possible to uh, consider the open strings as kind of a massive vector photon? Uh, no. The, so the this picture. The open string is a, is a particle pair. Uh, certainly if this particle hole from a bound state, then this bound state may be uh, spin one, may be vector-like. But it can also be spin zero and scalar-like. So, so I don't feel that thinking is, uh, is uh, helpful. Uh, the reason is here emphasize that the electron is a one-end of string. This is a crucial. Because uh, 
Electron is not something local. It's a topological data. It's a one end of a long string. So you cannot locally create the electron. This is, a, this is a very important concept. And so that's why electron can have a different statistics. A, a small second of a string, this open string is a small segment. This represents something local change. Local change can never have a Fermi statistics. And uh, so uh, can also cannot be a gauge boson. And, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so this is different from the, uh, different from the uh, string theory, I think. I think it's an old version of a string theory. You know, the old version, this is a picture of an old version of string theory. We have a molecule, we have an atom. If we cut them into smaller, we have a nuclear with a proton, we have a quarks. But then the string theory is like an older version of string theory, like cutting quark, you know, for the review of quark as a, 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 a string, a small, piece, a small piece of a string. Then given the vibration mode of the string give us like a quark or muon, you know, different things. That coming from a different vibration mode. But in this picture, the, the fermion corresponds to a small, very short string. And this is very different from this uh, picture that's uh, in this emerging picture, the fermion coming from is a one end of a very long string. And it is a non-local feature because a short string is still local. So you cannot have a different statistics. But when you have a one end of a very long string with a non-local topological excitation, there's a potential to change it's a, to change the statistics. That's a very important. I have two questions. First one is, uh, I mean, the, the first part, how is this theory falsifiable? Yeah. And the second part, how, okay, from a condensed matter point of view, with all these classifications, how do I engineer Hamiltonians to look for okay. spaces? Yeah. So the, the, the falsifiable knowledge is the, the part I skipped. And uh, so, so this, uh, so there, there's a, this, there's a, you can say there's two falsifiable predictions. Okay. Uh, one prediction is that uh, the all from this, this is a string net theory, all the composite fermion must carry gate charge. We know that in the standard model, all the elementary fermion carry gate charge, but however, the composite fermion may be totally neutral. So therefore, the standard standard model do not agree with this. Picture. So therefore, standard standard model. So basically, the string net theory says the standard standard model is wrong. And uh, so, uh, so, so in, in a way where there must be, we must include additional gauge gauge field of gauge symmetry, like uh, some additional Z two gauge theory symmetry. So this additional Z two gauge symmetry in the standard model would uh, would uh, predict a uh, cosmic string, which occurs on this. Uh, uh, gauge flux of this new gauge field. And uh, the, the, the there's an expanded bound of uh, under the scale of cost string is about uh, 10 to 15 G. So that's give you, so, so, so that's say that uh, if uh, the, 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 the core energy of this into gauge field should be pretty small. It's, a, it's about some times smaller than the, uh, than the gas scale or Planck scale. Then there's another prediction, I think, is that uh, the, again, say the standard standard model is not right. The standard standard model has 15 wild fermions per family. And uh, the string net theory say that it cannot have a 15 fermions. It's a favor, 16 is possible, maybe some other values are possible, but maybe 16 is most likely. So the, so you can say that's kind of a maybe weaker prediction. The stronger prediction is, is a not 15 wild <coughs> fermion, but it's favor 16 wild fermion. So that's, this prediction says that uh, there, there must exist a stereo neutrino. I don't know which mass, but I will say that stereo neutrino mass probably, I don't know whether the same scale as this string scale, so we can say the stereo neutrino mass scale should be less than 10 to the 15 G or something like that. But those are the de all the detailed model building. So, so, but the, in principle, they have these two kinds of prediction. But we'll, we'll really do the lattice, do the more detailed model building, there's maybe additional, uh, additional uh, features. 
And certainly in kinetic matter physics, the, the most important thing is that to, to engineer uh, some kind of a, uh, a simple realistic Hamiltonian. And this turned out to be quite difficult. It's uh, because uh, we try a lot of the Hamiltonian with a so-called two-body diffraction. Because uh, usually in the material, we don't have two-body diffraction in general. And, uh, but however, we have a, although this uh, topological order long entanglement is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, exists, and uh, there is a more topological order states than symmetry breaking states, because it's infinite. You know. and, but uh, however, uh, among the Hamiltonian, which have only two body interaction, seems uh, it's most likely have a symmetry breaking state. It's pretty hard to have a, a long entangled state with a from Hamiltonian with a two body interaction. Uh, it's possible. We, we do have an example of uh, that. But, uh, uh, but when you randomly pick a Hamiltonian with two body interaction, most likely it's a symmetry breaking state, it's a ground state. So I don't know. Um, Maybe there's a reason that maybe two-body interaction have a particular way to favor product states. You know, two-body interaction are pretty simple. Maybe the product states kind of uh, is more likely to be the ground state of two-body interaction. And uh, so, so right now, is, is, so your question is mechanism. So, so what kind of feature of interaction would uh, encourage or have a, a more likely to see topology order? But this is uh, still unknown. Right now, we are still looking for that. So right now, so basically we are kind of in the state, in the state which is, we know the superconductor, we know the BCS theory, but we don't know the formal mechanism. But, uh, so we are still looking for, we know the pairing condensation is what we want, but what caused pairing condensation is kind of, kind of like, uh, but it's not clear what caused the lambda entanglement. Since two body interaction is not clear from the, that's apparent, apparently to be the case.
bridge or things like that. And so, so, so that, that's really all a different way to design uh, design device. But we, we first, but to do that, we first need uh, a quantum material which uh, which uh, which can operate at room temperature. And so it's, it's like a, it's kind of like a high temperature quantum Hall space. In addition, uh, you, uh, instead of high temperature super dense connectivity. And that will go back to the previous question about the, the relevance of the transformer. Yeah. So so if you if you know basically that's a designing if you know if you understand the uh, 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 mechanism better, so probably that will help us to design a harmonic material which have a large gap which can operate at higher temperatures. And so uh, uh, so I, I mentioned that the looks like the difficulty is that two-fold interaction seems uh, uh, in general favor a circuit breaking state. And, uh, but that's nice because it's favor useful states. <laughs> and we have two-fold interaction, they favor useful states, so that's why we have a lot of useful material, rather than a lot of useless material. <laughs> Necessary to uh, adopt the language of quantum information in qubits because it seems to me that you could stay on very safe ground with quantum field theory by saying that you have an underlying quantum field theory with simple degrees of freedom, an unknown Hamiltonian, conjectured topological features that, that uh, then give you the standard model as, as a theory of its interactions. Yeah, this, would have, uh, this would have an advantage of letting you build in special relativity and Lorentz invariance, which could then morph into general covariance if you can come up with a spin field situation. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so actually, the motivation of this kind of uh, uh, research is really the is the uh, is the unhappiness about the current field theory uh, approach, uh, because uh, you can see in the grand unified theory uh, how we unify three interaction introduce a three H field. So it's not really unifying. You know, you can unify anything by introducing same number <coughs> of objects. And uh, and also uh, in the in the standard field theory like uh, in the line gate theory, we have to introduce different gauge field for different interaction and different fermion field for different quarks and leptons etc. So uh, so if we if, if, if people are happy with this, introducing those kind of fields to explain our world, that's fine. So basically, this is at the stage of these uh, seven wonders. So this, that's the basic ingredient we assume when we build current field theory. So the, at the moment, so what, what we try to do here is that we want to go one step further. Can we unify those ingredients even further to starting from one item? And uh, here, I say, maybe that's possible. Hard, we start from two items, qubits and the Lambert entanglement. But maybe Lambert entanglement is natural boundary qubits, so maybe you can say qubits. So basically, we try to say that starting from a single building block, qubits, can we obtain everything? Instead of starting with a U1 gate field, S2 gate field, S2 gate field, and, uh, and this uh, so many 16 or 48 uh, uh, fermion field. Certainly, if you're starting with uh, all these uh, ingredients, you can, you can make our work, we can make standard model, certainly. But the whether we can unify it further, that's, that's basically the issue. Can we unify it further? And uh, I try to argue that, but the answer is yes. And we can seem, seem to unify it to the end, actually, is that so we starting from the qubits, we can get everything. And you mentioned about the Lorentz invariance, and this is a, uh, uh, here, I'm, I'm cheating here. But I'm not quite, so I say not naturally, so I'm not cheating. <laughs> And uh, so Lorentz invariance in this picture can be obtained via fine tuning, not natural. The reason is that uh, here I'm doing quantum mechanics where the time and the space are inequivalent. Time is continuous time, and space can be discrete relative. So, so this inequivalent space time make Lorentz invariance very unnatural. Although you can fine tune to make a Lorentz theory have a Lorentz invariance, but you need to fine tune to make that. It's a consistent, but not natural. And uh, to make a, so actually this, this led to a, actually Lorentz symmetry is, uh, 
is a very fundamental, I think, even more fundamental than California. And uh, I feel that it's maybe the message to say that the quantum mechanics is wrong. That uh, to understand the Lorentz invariance, we probably cannot have a absolute time. And the quantum theory assumes absolute time. So that's it. So quantum mechanics is wrong. And so therefore, to explain Lorentz symmetry naturally, one probably has, has to go beyond the quantum theory. But at the moment, I'm based, I'm, I'm trying to do this, uh, this picture based on quantum theory. So I'm not going beyond quantum theory. So, so although, so this is not naturally, again, it's a puzzle, you know. You should remember all your puzzles. Maybe this is a door to another world, which is uh, uh, beyond the quantum theory. So, so I'm kind of imagine, uh, maybe there are some theory which is uh, beyond the quantum theory theory. And in this theory, we can still do the similar thing, but in that theory, the Lorentz symmetry would uh, appear natural, not unnatural. And, uh, so, 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 but that, that is uh, too far. You know, I won't get any grant by writing that kind of proposal. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so actually, you know, here we said the space is a lot of qubits. The whole information was uh, tra transmitted in this space. So basically, just this one camellia, cam one. No, that's it. So, so via interaction, I'd say. It's not like a moving a qubits from one place to another. It's a via the interaction between qubits. So this cube, this one can talk from here to here and from here. So this uh, excitation can move around. So that's how the information is transmitted. And the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, in some sense, is not principle. In a sense, uh, it, is a, <coughs> it is a statement about uh, the failure of our classical picture. You know, the issue about position and the momentum is, uh, is uncertain. But in real quantum world, in the qubit world, there's no position, there's no momentum. It's just qubits. If you want to use a classical picture of a position of momentum to mimic qubit's work, you couldn't do it. There's a failure of doing that is a Heisenberg principle. So, but if you're starting with the qubits, you don't need to worry about that. All you need to worry about is the qubits, there's a linear algebra, there's a Hamiltonian, and that is telling all the dynamics, all the phenomena, all the measurement. It's only this, uh, it's only this uh, desire to using the wrong classic picture <laughs> to see quantum work. And uh, this mismatch, this frustration is a has a problem. I wonder whether the three net model can predict uh, fundamental phenomena such as the asymptotic uh, freedom and confinement in QCD. What wavelength? Uh, asymptotic uh, freedom. freedom and confinement in QCD, whether that can be uh, predicted. Yeah, that's almost a trivial. And, uh, so the, the reason is that uh, the, uh, it's not predicted by the, uh, by the string net model, but by, uh, by the choice. You know, the, the string net model can have this U1, SU2, SU3 interaction. And once you have this gauge field, you, 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 they, they, have same, they have the same QED, QCD. They have the same uh, RG flow. So same uh, asymptotic uh, degree freedom. So, so all these, uh, so basically the, the string net model just give you a cutoff theory. You know, at cutoff scale, you have string net. But the below the cutoff, you have continuum limit. The continuum limit, the effective theory, you know, the continuum limit the effective theory is a standard uh, gauge theory and the field theory. So all this uh, picture works. It just, the, the string that model just tell you uh, what happened at the cutoff scale. So the cutoff scale can be cute. So the statement is really, really this. Although the field theory contains Grassmann field, the gauge field.